Hey, Jeffrey Lin here. I am feeling much better today, as you can tell by my booming voice. Probably never heard that before. We're going to do an impromptu video. We're going to follow up with the last video about being angry with our eczema to talk about resenting and being jealous of other people who don't have this problem. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about. Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boy. I know I promised that I would do the injection video, but it's not really the time for injection yet. Two more days. But because I am feeling good today, I am just going to do a video now. When you're sick all the time, you just have no control over the schedule and what you want to do every day. So I always do things when I can have the chance to, not when I want to. And today my skin is quite a bit more clear than it was in the last video. I don't know why. And um, I mean, it might still look a little bit bumpy, but underneath the skin feels cool. It's, there's not a lot of inflammation and feels solid and the skin doesn't feel like it's detached from my face. So that's always a good thing. And I'm moving air pretty well. My asthma is a lot better, even though one of my sinuses is still clogged, but man, I'm sure you guys can tell I'm just moving air so much better and I can't waste this opportunity and not make a video. So I want to continue with the topic last time of uh, being angry with your situation, being angry with your eczema or allergies or chronic illness and just the restriction of it all. Like I said last time, if you're feeling miserable and in pain, that is total justification for feeling anger or other intense emotions. I mean, I felt that all the time. As a child, I had the dry eczema and had the really scaly, cracking skin, and it was just really thick. But as I got older, it turned into the wet eczema, where it was always leaking and infected. It's called tearing, like uh, tears when you're crying. And at the worst, my skin was literally gone, and I looked like a burn victim. So my skin would stick to my bed sheets and my pillowcase when I was asleep. And anytime I turned, the pillowcase I was sticking to my face would just rip part of my skin off and I would bleed and I'll wake up from the pain and I would turn around again and fall asleep and the pillowcase or the sheets will stick to my neck or somewhere on my hands and rip more skin off whenever I moved. You know, I couldn't wear slippers. I obviously couldn't wear shoes because the socks would just stick to my skin and every time I pulled those socks off, it would just tear off the skin on my feet. Um, I couldn't put my hands in my pocket, couldn't hold a pen. My nails were literally falling off. I understand the misery that comes with eczema and autoimmune problems and being sensitive. And just the last video where I couldn't even stand up was because the rain was coming. And right now we're in between two rainstorms. So probably just today I'm going to feel decent. There's the bad kind of being angry where you're resentful and direct your anger towards other people, meaning you're jealous of other people. And that kind of anger is just a recipe for disaster. Man, you really got to check that emotion. Your voice just went from Shaggy to Scooby-Doo. This is not what we... <laughs> a lot of you younger viewers are angry or depressed about being restricted and not having a normal teenage life, whatever that means. And what that means is you're just looking around at certain people that seem to have a good life and you're just comparing yourself to the best possible scenario. You don't notice a lot of other people are suffering around you. A lot of people probably do have it worse. Than, a lot of people actually do have it worse than you. If you're watching this video, that means you have the internet. That means you're one of the most privileged people in history and also one of the most privileged people that are alive right now. So if you're comparing yourself to somebody you know who's young and rich or something or has good looks and athletic and going out and having a lot of friends and things like that, that's not the average person. That's not everybody. You're losing. You're losing because you're laying in your bed looking at somebody's glamorous photoshopped picture of them doing something cool and you're envious and you're jealous and you're impatient and it's crippling your upside. 
there are other people with other illnesses that aren't able to do much. There are people who are working already, taking care of their families when they're really young. Imagine not doing anything fun or going anywhere for the next eight years, including Saturday and Sunday. That's what I did from 22 to 30. Every day I spent 15 hours a day in a liquor store, thought about a liquor store, built a liquor store, sold wine, like spent every day. Even though you're stuck at home and limited to what you can do, this time is not wasted. All the time you spend being sick, is building up your tenacity, your ability to handle stress and having grace under pressure. I talked about this in the last video uh, about our strengths as people with chronic illnesses. We look at everybody else, meaning just everybody else who is able to be seen having an amazing life. Even those people might have problems that you don't want. And the older I get, that's something that I learned that everybody has problems. So even if somebody looks like they have a perfect life when they're younger, they'll inevitably run into problems when they get older. Look, everybody has good and bad. <laughs> In life, we're all born with either an advantage or disadvantage. We either started with too much or we started with too little. And then basically, you know, your internal fortitude decides if that was good or bad. I've sat with people that have $10 million in their trust fund crying, saying that they hate their lives because their parents took care of everything and they'll never achieve anything on their own and no matter what they achieve, everybody's gonna say it wasn't them and they think it's the worst and they're suicidal. This is real. Now, for somebody like you or others that started with zero, you're like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> 10 million, you know? You know, listen man, to be very honest with you, I'll give you the answer. You have no choice. That's how. What's the alternative? You know, so many people complain to me about their illness or situation in life, about how bad it is. And all I have to do is ask them, well, do you want to trade with me? Nobody ever in my life have wanted to trade their life with me. That's how bad my eczema, allergies, asthma, autoimmune disorder is. Research doctors have told me is the fifth worst condition that they've ever seen uh, with eczema, allergies, uh, asthma. And I'm sure there are other people out there who haven't met research doctors that are just as bad or worse than me, but I'm right up there. A lot of times I wouldn't want to trade with somebody else because at least I know mostly how to deal with my problems. When you dig into all the problems that there are that people experience in life, there's a lot of things that you, I don't want to trade with other people. Even though by the time I was four years old, I thought I would die because every doctor that I saw just had this blank stare. They were just afraid of my condition. They weren't just confused about how to deal with it. They were literally afraid and they didn't want to help me. And they didn't know how to help me. And I'm 36 now and I have a lot of friends that have already passed away or spouses of friends that have passed away, people I'm close with. When we were kids, these people were healthy. These people had an easier life. But so many things happen in life that you cannot predict. And just because you're in a bad situation now doesn't mean it won't get better. And just because somebody else has it better than you at this moment doesn't mean it'll be like that forever because it won't. That's what I'm saying with our strength, our experience of dealing with crises and having a tough time of it. When other people inevitably run into problems, we can help them. Instead of being jealous that somebody has a better time right now, look at other people who can use our help because there are a lot of people all around us that need our help. They just might be too sick or too tired, just like you, that they can't make their voice heard and you just got to go look for it. I have several friends that have depression and I would never have believed it until they told me because they seem like the happiest people in the world. But those are people that I've been able to help and I'm really glad I can. And it's only because of the problems and afflictions I've gone through with my skin and allergies that I was able to help my friends through their depression. Let me end with this story here. When I went to Milan, Italy for Fashion Week a couple of years ago for the fashion magazine I started, uh, I met a lot of Italian photographers that work with Russian models. And I asked, why 
don't we see most of these Russian models again? They kind of are always new faces and they just disappear. I'm like, wh where do they go? Do they go back to Russia and have nice gigs there and just live a great life? No, apparently when a model is discovered in Russia, the modeling agency will bring them out to one of the Western European countries like Italy or France, like Paris Fashion Week, where they'll get some exposure, they'll get some work. And these models don't get paid for the work. They just get room and board. And if they don't stand out in three months or so, if they don't get big contracts and become an international superstar, they get sent back to Russia. The agencies don't want them. And these girls end up going back to Russia. And the only livelihood they have are being a prostitute, which means they'll end up taking a lot of drugs and probably dying early. And I was like, you know, traveling to Europe was incredibly difficult. And I ate McDonald's every single day because at the time, McDonald's was the only safe food that I can eat. But. I don't think I would want to trade my life here in America for a healthy Russian girl that ends up having the only choice in life is to become a prostitute. There are just so many variations of life that if you can't say mine is worse. Yeah, seriously, 99.99999% of the world is having a hard time and all those people have something to be angry about, something to be depressed about. So don't focus on other people. Just focus on what you can do with your situation that can make it just a tiny bit better each day or each week or each month. Focus on actionable things that you can do. And emotions like anger and even depression isn't something that's going to get us anywhere better